say, young man, you were holding the Boy Scout pin in your mouth when you swallowed it. No. No. Before I swallowed it. Before you swallowed it. <laughs> Are you sure you swallowed it? Well, I, uh, I got sticking pains in my stomach. Oh, you have? Mm-hmm. What have you eaten lately? Uh, one Boy Scout pin. <laughs> well, this is serious, young man. Yeah? I may have to do a laparotomy. Oh, I don't care, as long as you don't have to operate. Well, a laparotomy is an operation. Oh, it is, yes. You see, otomy, from the Latin word, to open. Uh-huh. Like strufa. Strufa. That's from the Latin word, yaha, to squirt without splashing. Oh, that's enough of that. <laughs> well, what are you doing here? Well, I want a nurse. Well, well push it again. I want one, too. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what are you going to do, doctor? Well, I'm going to take a picture of the inside of your stomach. No. How are you going to get down there with a camera? Well, I have an X-ray and a fluoroscope. Oh, yeah. I want a picture of your esophagus. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you want me, Dr. Bergen? If you don't want her, I'll take her. The fluoroscope, Miss Patterson. Not bad, not bad, not bad. <laughs> Please sit still now, Charlie, so I can put this screen in front of you. Oh, pictures, huh? That's right. Hmm. See, I got a good seat. The abdominal region? No, he wants a picture of my asparagus. Esophagus. Oh, all right. <laughs> I don't know. Will you plug in the cord, please? <laughs> you know, it's a, fu it's a funny... Doctor? Doctor? He was here a second ago, and... <gasps> <laughs> Will you throw the switch, please? You know, it's a... Uh, it's a... Uh... Well, well, well... <laughs> Well, I've never seen anything like this. Oh, I have. But I never get tired of looking at it. I wonder if this can be taken out tonight. I don't know. I'll ask her. <laughs> What's cooking tonight, babe? Nurse to you. Oh, no dice, doctor, will you, please? <laughs> I want you to look at this, Miss Patterson. Notice here is the heart, here's the diaphragm, the esophagus, the kidney, mm. and the liver. My, my, my. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if I'd known you were coming, I would have tidied up things. Oh, that's all. Right. <laughs> oh, dear, dear. Here's the heart. You can see it beating, yes. Oh, my, it's beating so yeah, fast, yeah. Charlie. Yeah. Step by up, folks. Always a show going on. Never <laughs> Yeah. Mm. Ah, be calm, Charlie. Uh, be calm. Uh, oh. uh, <laughs> Now, you mustn't excite yourself, little boy. A little boy? Where do you get that little boy? Oh, Charlie! That'll learn you, darn you. <laughs> well, Charlie, I found the pin. Well, good for you. I'm afraid we'll have to operate. Yeah? How much will it cost me? Oh, about $500. Don't be ridiculous. The pin is only worth a quarter. Yes, I know. <laughs> Ah, but this is a first-class operation. Ah, but I'm only a second-class scout. Yeah, I know. Ah, wait a minute here. There's something wrong. Huh? That pin has moved. Open your shirt. Ah, uh, ladies present. Yes, I know. Just as I thought, young man. Ah. Uh, There's your pin. You'd slipped it inside of your shirt. <laughs> now I don't have to pay you nothing. Oh, yes, you do. Well, then give me the pin. Why? I'm going to swallow it. You're going to earn your money. Is that so? <laughs> something I want you to do for me. Yes, Miss Patterson. Take these pictures of Bergen and McCarthy to the publicity department and tell Jack Quillen I'll send the rest of them tomorrow. And stop by the mail department and pick up Charlie's family. Talk. Wait a minute, Tommy. No, Joe. No autographs tonight. Well, tell the crowd he's already left. And, Tommy, will you ask Mr. Bergen's chauffeur to bring the car around back for him? Yes, sir. That's all. Thanks. Okay, Miss Patterson. Evening, Mr. Bergen. Uh, hello, Freddie. That's Tommy. Freddie's the tall, thin one. Yeah, hello, Tommy. Why so droopy? Oh, I'm worried about next week's program. I haven't got an idea in my head. Next week? Edgar, this was your last broadcast of the season, remember? Is this the 28th? You have a memory like a sieve. Look, now get out of here. I gotta get dressed. I'll meet you in your apartment in an hour. Yes, but no business discussions, because I'm going to get some rest. You're gonna what? I'm going to hit the hay early for a change. Oh, fine. What do you want me to tell your guests? Oh, I don't care. What guests? The 30 people you invited to a party tonight, remember? In my honor. Gee, God's the party. Julie, I completely forgot about it. It slipped my mind. Yeah, what mind? Cutting a hunk of rug, 
tonight, isn't she? Marge, you're Julie's best friend. Give us a lowdown. Is this just a party, or are we celebrating something? Well, what difference does it make? Well, Landy, if it's just a party, I'll allow him two drinks. If it's a celebration, the sky's the limit. <laughs> well, come on, you wallflowers. Stop wasting all this expensive music. You got here in the nick of time, Sheriff. These two cads were just pumping me. Cool. What do you know that they don't know? I'm a blank, but they don't believe me. Oh. What is this, Julie? A social event or just a jam session? This is probably the biggest thing that's happened since Barnum met Bailey. Miss Julie is on the terrace. Thank you, Harris. Jerry! Hello, Julie. Sorry I'm late. Working with the lawyers on Bergen's new contract. Hello, Jerry. How's the young financial genius? I have to be a genius to be your business manager. Don't you even want to know what I'm doing with your money? No. I'm not interested in figures, unless they're human. <laughs> Jerry, you're eight rumbas and three cocktails behind. Rumbas will have to wait. Look, are you going to tell these wolves why you gathered them here to guzzle, or have you forgotten? I'd like to talk to you first. Now, please don't misunderstand, but are you sure, or I mean, are you positive? Did I want to get married? Mm -hmm. Yes. Every girl wants to get married sometime, and I might as well do it while I still have my own teeth. Julie, are you sure you're in love with Jerry? Why not? There's nothing wrong with him, is there? Besides, it's the best offer I've had. Well, what's going to become of me? Why, I haven't made a move without you for ages, Julie. Oh, now, don't talk like little boy blue. I've been training Marge for weeks, and she'll pick up right where I leave off. There's something wrong about this whole thing, and I just can't figure it out. Will you tell him? Okay, let's go. A chord, please, Manny. Attention, everybody. Quiet, please. Friends, you all know Julie Patterson. She's been my girl Friday for a long time. So tonight, it's with regret for myself, but great happiness for Julie, that I announce a marriage this coming Wednesday to my good friend, Jerry Woods. Oh, Marge. What's eating her? Heart trouble, I think. What? Come two bright eyes. Marge was almost engaged to Jerry once. I see. But she made the fatal mistake of introducing him to Julie. Right. Now, Julie's taking over Marge's boyfriend, and Marge is taking over Julie's boss. Oh, nine, 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 nine. It's wonderful. Love is like champagne. Marriage is the headache, and divorce is the aspirin tablet. <laughs> <laughs> Marriage is a strong institution, Charlie. Yes, yeah, so is Alcatraz, but I wouldn't want to live in it. <laughs> You'll change your mind as you grow older, Charlie. You'll be marrying yourself someday. No, no, marrying myself, that wouldn't be legal. <laughs> <laughs> well, girls, if you want to kiss Charlie goodbye, you better do it before he and Edgar leave on their vacation tomorrow. Yeah, the line horns to the left, girls. Now, don't trample one another. <laughs> <laughs> Edgar, you mean you won't be here to give the bride away? No, I'm afraid not. You know how Bergen hates to give anything away. Oh, <laughs> all right. Where are you going on your vacation, Charlie? Uh, Pinehurst. Gee, I can't wait to get on the old rattler. Well, Charlie, we're not going by train. No? an awful long walk. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're flying there in my new plane. Yeah. I just received my pilot's license. Yeah, you see, Julie, even when I can do what I want, he makes me do it the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> well, slap happy landings, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> uh, um, uh, not to be personal or anything, but uh, do you know where we are? Well, I'm afraid, Charlie, something's gone wrong with my calculations. Yeah. Maybe you forgot to wind the compass. Uh oh. Oh. Bumpy, isn't it? Yeah. I'm getting a little sick of my liver slapping me under the chin. Why don't you admit we're lost, Bergen? Why don't you admit it? Oh, no, Charlie. We, we still have our maps, you know. Yeah, but can you read them? Oh, certainly. Now, let me show you. Uh, let's see. Well, now we're getting someplace. Now, right there. Yeah, that's Alaska. Yes. <laughs> Why, I go up with you. Now, look, Charlie. There is Pinehurst. Yes, but where are we? Well, we should be just about, uh, uh, say, that looks like a nice little village down there, doesn't it? Friendly little place. Mrs. McGee! Congratulations, Steve. I hear that you're a father. Yep. Nine-pound boy, born last night. Oh, wonderful. Who does he take after? Me. He's a bottle baby. Are you rascal? You better leave me the usual for today, Pete. Well, run.
found a special today, Miss McGee, on Hula Hot Cheese. That's cottage cheese with pineapple in it. And it comes in a beautiful hand-painted container so that when you get through the cheese, you can use it as a swell bond bondage. But you just want the usual quart grade A, don't you? That's right, Pete. That's what I thought. to jump like that. Well, McGee rewired the house last week. Huh? He thinks he's another macaroni. Oh, that's Marconi. Well, McGee wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> oh, Mr. McGee! Good morning, Mr. Bagworthy. Just leave the mail on the porch. Sorry, I can't, Fibber. There's one cent due on this letter. Oh, uh, just a minute. That rabbit it never fails. When a guy's in a hurry, somebody always bothers him. Never any change around this place. The government wouldn't trust me for a penny. Oh, here we are. This check good for one short beer. Oh, no, that's no good at the post office. Hey, Molly. Yes, dearie? Where can I find some change? Where can you always find some change? Huh? Oh. Better hurry, McGee. We'll be late for the meeting. OK. No wonder we lost. Oh. I'm sorry if I detained you, Mr. Bagworthy. That's all right, Mr. McGee. Oh, boy, this is from the Horton Airplane Company. That's the letter I've been waiting for. What about the penny? Oh, pardon me. I certainly wouldn't want to cheat you, Uncle Sam. You've got a fat chance, nephew. <laughs> Molly. Hey, Molly. Here's a letter from the Horton Airplane Company. That's fine. What's happened to the wiring? I don't know. They don't say anything about it. Of course they don't. I'm asking you. Take a look at that. Oh, boy. Yes, I'm coming, dearie. I'm coming. I'm sorry, sir, but uh, me husband is caught in the drain pipe. Yeah, for every purchase of a dollar or more, our company will make you a present of a gold-plated silver set. Now, I'm sure that you'll be very happy. Get ready, dearie. We're late. Are you ready? Hurry up, Molly. This is the most important meeting since I've been chamber of the president of, or president of the Chamber of Commerce. Where's my speech? It's in your portfolio. Yeah, I know, but where's my portfolio? Oh, I know. It's right here in the hall closet. <laughs> Straighten out this closet one of these days. Oh, never mind that now, dearie. I'll lock the back door while you get the car out of the ground. Yeah, but where's my letter? Where'd I put that dead ratted letter? Oh, you had it. Well, come on, we're late. Shut up. If the ladies' auxiliary will take their seats, we'll open the meeting. <clears throat> the uh, minutes of the last We'll dispense with the reading of the minutes of the last meeting on account of it was postponed till today. Uh, Mr. President. The chair recognizes Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Don't we, Elizabeth? Go ahead, Gildy. Uh, fellow members, as you all know, the city owns a piece of useless property, laughingly known as the Wistful Vista Flying Field. As you also know, Mayor Duncan has asked the Chamber's advice on how to dispose of this property which the city hasn't been able to turn over, not even with a plow. <laughs> now, I have a friend who is offering the city a $2,000 profit on its investment. And I move that we urge the city to accept the offer. I most heartily second that motion. Thank you, Mrs. Uppington. What's your hurry, Gildersleeve? Let's not count our chickens before we lay our golden egg. What are you talking about? The Horton Airplane Company is planning on building a factory in this vicinity, and they're trying to decide between Wistful Vista and Ironton across the river. 
If we can get them to put it here in Wistful Vista, we'll leave Ironton further behind than the bustle on a snake. See here, McGee, that's a pipe dream and you know it. Horton has already decided to build an Ironton. I have that from an unimpeachable source. Unimpeachable apple source. Take a peck at this, Gildersleeve. There's a letter from the Horton Airplane Company. My dear Mr. McGee, we think you should be made cognizant that inexhaustive technological investigation predisposes us preponderantly towards your neighboring municipality. But we might conjecturably contemplate an alternative situation in the immediate proximity. Cordially yours, Hillary Horton. What do you say to that? Highly noncommittal and nebulous. You're darn right. Now I think we should hang on to this field and go after Horton. This is completely irrelevant. Do I hear a motion to adjourn from maybe uh, Mrs. McGee? I make a motion that the meeting be adjourned. Do I hear a second? <coughs> Thanks, Mr. Sinus. The meeting stands adjourned. <laughs> get away with this. You're railroading this thing through. I'm surprised you could follow it, you big caboose. You're a hard man, McGee. And furthermore, Gildersleeve, that offer you had from a friend is a fake. It must be a fake. Why must it be a fake? Because you haven't got a friend. Come on. Oh. Why, you and me makes little anthropological aberration? Who's an anthropological abbreviation? You are. I am not. You are, too. He is not. Well, make up your mind. You can't call me that and get away with it. I'll sock his face so far down into those Oxfords, he'll be known as Puss in Boots. Why, you bumptuous little botfly? I could smack you down with a wet noodle. Why, do you think he could? No. Neither do I. I ain't as scared of you, Gildersleeve. I'm going to protect the people of Wistful Vista. I'm going to see that Horton sees our site before he seizes any other site he sees. Oh! You and that broken down airport of yours. Why, well, I'll bet five dollars that a Horton plane never comes within five miles of that morbid little meadow. Oh, yeah? Well, put your money where your mouth is, Gildersleeve. <laughs> It's outrageous. He's endangering our lives and our property. Choo! Oh, go away with you. Hey, I'll tell you why he's flying so low. He's going to land on our field. That's what he's going to do. Uh, I wonder who it could be. Who knows? Maybe it's Hillary Horton. Holy smoke, it's Hillary Horton. It's Hillary Horton, the man who got the airplane. It is. Let's go out to the field and watch him land. Will you drive me out to the airport in your car? Why, certainly, Miss Lovington. Goldbergen. Oh, Charlie, where are you? I'm flying blind. Oh, come out of there. Charlie. Oh, oh. slug me, that's what you do. Charlie, I think we better let her down. Hell yeah. yes. How much gas have we left? Oh, we got about... Wow. What? It's on a discouraging side of empty. It is. Yeah. Well, hang on. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh. <gasps> Sabotage, sabotage. Oh, there we go. Sabotage, sabotage. Shall I make the reception speech? I'll attend to it, Mrs. Uppington. Oh, look, he's going to land. Oh, my goodness, he's heading straight. <laughs> I'll have a on him for this. Whoa. Relax, Charlie. Look at me. I'm as cool as a cucumber. Yeah, and the same color, too. Now, watch me, Charlie. I'll make a perfect three-point landing. <laughs> Two trees and a fence. Yeah. I'll give that pilot a piece of my mind when he lands. Yes, I'll have a few words to say to him myself. Come on, Abigail. Very well. You did it, Bergen. You did it. What's the idea of trying to hit us? Well, I'm sorry. We didn't see you. Well, what's the idea of parking in the middle of the fairway? Young man, don't you realize that there's a law against low flying over cities? You call this Berg a city? You keep a civil tongue in your head, and the sooner you get going, the better. Now listen, Walrus. Plus one more crack out of you, and I'll clip you. Help me, I'll mow you down. Mow you down? McGee, that's Charlie McCarthy. Charlie McCarthy? Then he must be Edgar Bergen. Mr. Bergen, as president of the Chamber of Commerce, I have the honor to welcome you and your little friend to Wistful Vista. Well, we're very glad to be here. Personally, I'm glad to be anywhere. Oh, sure. Mr. Bergen, Mrs. McGee and I'd like to have the pleasure of... How'd you like to come up to our house and freshen up a bit? I bet you fellows would like to wash your hands. Yeah, I'd like to wash mine, the whole darn thing. Well, that's very kind of you, Mr. McGee. I'll roll your ship into the hangar, Mr. Bergen, and then I'll be glad to fill your tanks. Oh, uh, Tanks. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> 
Hey, Throcky, get a load of this. <laughs> There's no hurry about that five. Just send me a check in the mail. <laughs> It's cordially there, but it don't sound very cordially to me. Hillary always did use big words. Hillary? You mean you know this guy, Horton? Oh, for years. And if I'm not mistaken, he still owes me a favor, too. You don't think... I mean, uh, could you get him to come here? Well, if he doesn't come, it'd be the first time he ever disappointed me. Would this factory mean so much to your community? Would it? Well, look at the jobs it'd make. Look at the people it'd bring to this town. It'd make this a real live wire city. That's what it would do. What would you get out of it? Who, me? Oh, not a darn thing. I want it for the good of the city. I love this town and the people that live in it. They're a loyal, intelligent bunch of people. And if I put this thing over and them ungrateful mugs don't re-elect me president of the Chamber of Commerce, I... Ah, I sometimes wonder why I go to all this trouble. McGee, I can't start that pig-headed dishwasher of yours. Want to see my latest invention, Edgar? Oh, you're an inventor, too, huh? Sure, I started inventing years ago when I was boss of the precision division of the Biggs Machine Company. Yes, sir. Oh, here it is, right here. That's me under the arrow. Ah, that was some plan, Edgar. You should have seen the special workshop old man Biggs fixed up just for me to tinker around in. <laughs> Big Stinker McGee, I was known as in them days. Oh, dear. Big Stinker McGee, the brawny and brainy Bonaparte of the benzene buggy blacksmiths, busy as a beaver and bright as a beacon at bolting bumper brackets on big bus bodies, bringing back the bacon as the boss of the brake band, bumblebee of the brace and bit, and big bullfrog of the brass bicycle bell bonkers, a breezy, brilliant bozo for a beginning boy to copy, but here's my pride and joy at dishwashing jalopy. Uh, would, you, uh, would you mind repeating that? <laughs> Don't encourage you, Mr. Bergen. <laughs> oh, the wife saver. How does it work? Just like eating lettuce. Nothing to it. All you gotta do is plug it in, open up the carburetor, turn on the hot water, a little cold, close the lid, turn the switch. Oh. Oh. Hey. Does it always act like that? Well, it's the first time we've tried it. And the last. Hey, Molly, speak over and shut it off. I don't know how. Shut it off yourself, dearie. It ain't mad at you. It's mad at me. Oh, well, I'll need my dishes. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on in, neighbor. Doorbell, Mr. Bergen. What do we help me? Will you uh, open the door? Oh, how do you do, Mr. McGee? Oh, my charades. <laughs> All clear. You can come out now, boys. Quite a playful little machine, McGee. For anti-aircraft, I suppose. It was a dishwasher, bubble puss. Well, at least it'll save time. You don't have to dry the dishes now. <laughs> Very funny. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, uh, cheer up, little chum. I really came to give you this. Never let it be said that Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve does not pay his debts promptly. Oh, shucks, that's all right, Gildy. I guess we both were a little excited. Well. <laughs> but, but I've calmed down now. Well, I certainly want to apologize to Mr. Bergen. I acted like a peasant at the flying field. A poor, miserable, ignorant peasant. Oh, let's forget about the whole thing, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> oh, Mr. Bergen, what a delightful surprise. I had no idea I'd find you here, really. Subtle as an earthquake, ain't she? 
<laughs> you must think I'm really a naughty, naughty girl. <laughs> you know, I should really write on a blackboard, Abigail is a naughty girl 200 times. <laughs> <laughs> Heavenly days, what's that? We know you don't get to see celebrities like Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy very often. We know you're all excited, but uh, after all, Mr. Bergen didn't come here to work. Oh. Oh. I'd like to hear if you don't mind. Oh, tickled to death. I want to meet Charlie McCarthy. Well, I'm afraid Charlie's gone to bed. Let's see you throw your voice. All make right. me talk? Well, I'll make your dolly talk. But my dolly's sick. Oh, what's the matter with her? She's lost her head. You <laughs> that is serious, isn't it? <laughs> well, let's make a head for her. All right. Fine. All right. We'll just use a pencil, you see. We'll make an eye over here, and another eye over here. Say, dearie, huh? don't look now, but do you see who's standing in our petunia bed? Oh. oh. The lieutenant governor's wife. Well, now, <laughs> hope our petunias are properly impressed. Well, they should be. She weighs over 300 pounds. She's not very young, and she's not very pretty, but she can wear an off-the-face hat. There she is. <laughs> and now, if you'll use your imagination, she will talk to us. Yes, yeah. mm. that's right. <laughs> what is your name? Ophelia. Ophelia. Mm -hmm. You're not married? No, darn it, no. I see. Are you thinking of marrying anyone? Mm-hmm. Who? Anyone. <laughs> Have you ever had a sweetheart? Well, I ain't saying. Did a man ever put his arms around you? Well, once. Once? Mm-hmm. When a bus turned over. <laughs> well, then you've never really had a sweetheart. Well, sort of once. Is that so? Mm-hmm. Where did you meet him? I found him. Oh. Under my bed. <laughs> he was a burglar. A burglar? Mm-hmm. Well, did you call the police? What for? Mm. I found him. He's mine. <laughs> well, was he very handsome? Oh, he was so nice. Yes. He kissed me good night, too. Oh, he did? Mm -hmm. <laughs> kissed you good night? Mm -hmm. Oh, boy, what a night. <laughs> well, uh, tell me, Ophelia, who did he look like? Oh, like um, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, I see. <laughs> now, there's a man for you right there. Oh, I like him young. Young. Mm. In uniform. Oh, I see. You like soldiers. Well, they, mm. <laughs> well, why don't you go out to Camp Smith? Are there soldiers there? Oh, yes. 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 About 10,000. About 10,000? Yes. Ooh, help, help, help. <laughs> Mr. Bergen, Mr. Bergen is tired now. Let's not impose on him anymore. So if you'll all just pass out quiet. Good night, everyone. Very good night. Very good. You're marvelous, you're marvelous. Oh, you're marvelous. Right well, I must be getting along now, little chum. You know, early to bed and early to rise. And you won't need a red cap to carry the bags under your eyes. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, good night, Mr. Bergen. I must have you for lunch tomorrow. Well, some other time, possibly. <laughs> oh, goodbye. Abigail just rang up another no sale on her social register. <laughs> night, people. Oh, lovely. It's the biggest thing that's happened to Wistful Vista since the shirtwaist factory went bust. Is that you, wrong way, Bergen? Are you still awake, Charlie? Why, you should have been asleep an hour ago. Yeah, well, it's worry that keeps me from going to sleep. Oh, I see. And what are you worrying about? Oh, worrying about how early I have to wake up. Well, never mind. You won't have to get up early tomorrow morning. Well, we do go to Pinehurst, huh? No, Charlie. I've decided to stay in Wistful Vista. What, in this jerk town? Now, Charlie, we've had a very pleasant visit here. Oh. And our host and hostess have been very nice. And I think I know a way of returning their kindness. By leaving early? No, no, no. Charlie, a week or two here will do us a world of good. Oh, a week or two. What have I done to deserve this? I'll send Julie a wire in the morning so she'll know where we are. Yeah. Yeah, well, you can forget about Julie. She's getting married Wednesday. Yes, she is. 
Yes, he is, yes. McGee, when are you coming up to bed? Okay, I'm coming now. Don't forget to put out the lights and lock the door, dearie. Okay. I hope you haven't been working on another invention. No, I've been working on my speech for the dedication of the new airplane factory. Heavenly days, McGee. They can't build a factory overnight. Isn't that speech a little immature? Not the way they're building plane plants these days, is it? Why, the first thing you know, Molly, people will be pointing their finger at that factory. And you know what they're going to say? Sure, they'll say, there's the new factory. They will not. People are going to say, Fibber McGee's responsible for this. He's the man that brought prosperity to this town. He's got foresight. He's got albumin. You mean acumen. I do. And what's albumin? That's what they make pots out of. That's just what I mean. People are going to make pots of dough out of this. You know what that's going to mean to me? What's that mean to you, dearie? Well, they're going to elect a new mayor in this town pretty soon. You know what's going to happen on election day? Sure. The Republicans will vote just from force of habit. No, sirree. People are going to say, we want Pipper McGee for mayor. How does that sound, Molly? Mayor McGee. Why not Governor McGee? Why not Governor McGee? Why not even President? Oh, no, no, dearie. I could never be First Lady of the Land. Who'd want to read about my day? President McGee. Words just kind of roll off your tongue. If you don't mind, dearie, I won't wait up for any more election returns. Well, I can see it all now. President McGee, wearing an Indian headdress during the campaign, kissing all the babies on the platform, a high silk hat at the inauguration, fishing off the edge of a battleship. Look, she's dreaming. Don't forget to wind the clock, Mr. President. Oh, okay. Oh, no, you, you wind it. That, that always embarrasses me. President Lee. Gentlemen of the Senate. Morning, Mayor Duncan. Hi, uh, Joe. What's McGee trying to pull now? Well, it seems that Edgar Bergen is a personal friend of Hillary Horton's. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Hello. So on Wednesday, Bergen is bringing Horton over from the Capitol to look at the flying field. McGee wants the Chamber of Commerce to throw a luncheon in honor of the occasion. <laughs> <laughs> and furthermore, the Chamber of Commerce has no money to throw away on your wildcat ideas. Oh, but listen, Gildersleeve, if we don't take the bull by the horn... I'm not a bull and quit grabbing my coat. That rat at you guys haven't got the vision of a groundhog. If you get such a bang out of being a big shot, McGee, why don't you just entertain him at your own expense? Listen, my fine feather brain friend, if I thought that you thought that I was getting anything out of this personally, I'd pay for the whole shebang myself. What did he say? He said he'd pay for the whole shebang himself. Sounds like a pretty good idea. Maybe we better take him up on it. Oh, now, wait a minute. Don't I... be silly, little chum. You couldn't afford it. Who says I can't afford it? I'll show you whether I'm insoluble or not. Fix up a luncheon tomorrow for about 40 people. Decorate the room and hire some musicians. I'll show these septics what high-pressure business is. Is this an organizational function or a personal commitment? Neither one. Charge it to me. Oh, I'm afraid we can't very well do that, Mr. McGee. You're a delinquent. I am never no such a thing. I'll have you know I had just as sweet and clean a childhood as any of the rest of the... Oh, <laughs> back dues, huh? And assessments. How much? Dues, $24, assessments, $38, 10 cigars, 40 cents, ripping the cloth on the pool table, $14.75, total, $77.15. <laughs> what do you know about that? <laughs> Funny how these things slip up on you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. What's $77 to a big businessman like you? I could take care of it right now if I had a check with me. Here you are, Mr. McGee. <clears throat> You'd better add a hundred dollars to that for the luncheon, Mr. McGee. What's he doing? He's writing a check. A bet will bounce. There you are. Serve the best of everything. We have chicken a la king. Use nothing but the finest grade of tuna fish. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. Don't be late for the luncheon, brothers. What do you say? What do you say? Tuna fish a la king. I won't like it. He will see you now, Mr. Gildersleeve. You uh, sent for me, Sam? Have a chair, Gildersleeve. It's 
smoke, old man? Uh, thank you, I am smoking. And, uh, how is our little deal progressing? Everything running along smoothly? Oh, yes, very smoothly. As well as can be expected. It is, eh? Why, you blithering big bag of balloon juice, you're making a mess of it and you'll know it. See here, Sam, by George, you can't talk like that to me. Who do you think I am? I think you're the bungler I hired to buy the Wistful Vista flying field for me. You know very well that if I have that property in addition to the field I own in Ironton, those airplane people will be forced to deal with me on my terms. Yes, I know, Sam. You don't know anything, Gildersleeve, or else you wouldn't let this McGee block our deal and try to sell Horton on Wistful Vista. But McGee and I are friends. He lives right next door. In fact, we're close friends. The closer, the better. You can use a shorter knife. I know that business is business, but by George, I'm not going to double-cross my best friend. You can count me out of this deal. What about the $500 I advanced to you? Before I'd harm my little chum, I'll give it back. Oh, no, you don't. I have my canceled check with your endorsement on it. And I've got you just where I want you, Mr. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. What do you mean? Don't you know that anyone accepting a commission on a real estate transaction without having a state license is guilty of a criminal offense, punishable by six months in jail and a $500 fine? Put that in your cigar and smoke it. Well, I don't care. I'll fight this case clear up to the Supreme Court. Won't do you any good, Gildersleeve. They'll still send you to prison. <laughs> you won't be so fat and sassy after they get through with you. And you won't look so neat and natty in a striped prison uniform. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Don't talk like that to me, Sam. You know I've always wanted to cooperate. Then get me that flying field. Keep Horton out of Wistful Vista. Sabotage that party, and I don't care how you do it, but squelch that McGee guy. All right, Sam, I'll do it. But there's only one thing I've got to say. Yes, I know, I know. I'm a hard man. Well, young man, are you enjoying your visit to Wistful Vista? This isn't a visit, it's a sentence. Oh, then you don't like it here. That, Mr. Gildersleeve, is a nice hunk of deduction. Charlie, when I was a young man, I was harder to hold down than you are. I remember once I was stuck in a place I didn't like and my uncle wouldn't take me back home. <laughs> but I fixed that all right. Well, what did you do? Well, I sent a wire to a friend of mine back home and had him send a wire to my uncle. Y you fascinate me. Pray go on. The telegram said my aunt was very ill and my uncle was wanted back home. <laughs> of course, uh, my friend signed my aunt's name. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. you send a wire to your uncle. He, oh. <laughs> well, 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 well. Yes. They couldn't keep me any place I didn't want to stay. You know, Throcky, old boy, I like you. You're so much like me, but I'm an awful rat. It's... Oh, well, thank you. Well, I must uh, be By the way, would it be too much of a coincidence if you happen to be passing a telegraph office, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to the capital to get Mr. Horton? That's right, as soon as the motor's warm. Oh, that's that. No change in your plan? No, no. No messages? No. Haven't heard any news lately? No. <laughs> what day is today? It's Wednesday. Now, will you stop your babbling and fasten your safety belt? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, okay, Charlie. We we'll go now. Yeah, hold anything, Bergen. Here comes Mercury. I have a rush wire for you, Mr. Bergen. Oh, thank you, sir. Julie. Well, what does she say? Very ill. Please come at once. Need you desperately. Julie. Oh. And this is her wedding day, too. I'm going to New York. Did you check the oil? Yes, sir. New York? But I thought you... All clear? All clear, sir. What you want, fellas? Well, fine. Have some more dirt. Thanks. This is a great party, Fibber. Thanks. Ah, oh, boys. Hello there, little chum. Uh, guest of honor not here yet? Oh, hold your horses, you big brewery truck. 
He'll be here in no time. In no time, eh? Well, I hope you're right. <laughs> Excuse me a minute, fellas. Well, you did say you were coming to tea Wednesday, didn't you, Mother? Why, well, Mary Blaze, you know that Wednesday is Ladies' Club afternoon. And that reminds me, I promise not to breathe a word of this. But you're going to be elected our new president, Mrs. McGee. Me? Mm -hmm. Heavenly days. Isn't it really? Oh, and you know, we all... But, oh. Abigail, where did you get that lovely frock? When I look at you, I feel positively dowdy. Aren't they here yet, dearie? Oh, it's five after one. Edgar's probably landing at the field right now. When the five was open, the birds begin to sing. Now, wasn't that a merry thing to set before the king? doodle lay how can you sing at a time like this? Just trying to keep up the spirits, that's all. Are you uh, worried about Julie? What a ridiculous question to ask. Well, it's quite surprising. You're kind of stuck on her, aren't you? I'm very fond of Julie, you know that. Yes, 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 yes. yes. What time is it? Uh, time? Oh, it's uh, uh, 3,000 feet. No, 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 no. Uh, 120 miles an hour. No, no. Half past one. Yes, that's right. Oh, oh, oh. gravity setting in. Yes. Oh, this delay is deplorable, really. Such a breach of good manners. And besides, I'm hungry. I'm so hungry, I think I shall order a taxi. Oh, now, wait a minute, folks. I'm not enjoying this delay any more than you are. Now, sit down and wait a few minutes. Bergen and Horton will be here any second. Mayor Duncan is out at the airfield now to welcome them. Mr. McGee, uh, Mr. Mayor Duncan wants to speak to you from the airport. There, you see that? They probably just come in. Here you are, Mr. McGee. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Do you know that Bergen's gone to New York? Bergen is what? Oh, oh, he couldn't. There must be some mistake. There's no mistake, McGee. Your friend Bergen has made jackasses of all of us. Oh. Oh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Marge, have you got that memorandum slip I made out this morning? Uh huh. here it is. Disconnect phone, turn off gas and electric, camper and closet. Pass key to superintendent, defrost refrigerator. All set. Well, Mr. Bergen's apartment is officially closed for the summer. Oh, Julie, what do I do about this household checking account when it runs low? Ask Edgar for money? Oh, no, ask Jerry. The only dough Bergen ever handles is his pocket money and Charlie's allowance. Oh, here's two chairs that have to be covered yet. That lamp can get a cellophane bag. What about this bric-a-brac? Wrap it in tissue and put it in that box outside. Julie, do you think Edgar and I'll get along? Oh, Marge, he's the easiest man in the world to get along with. He's really wonderful when you get to know him. Oh, well, I knew it. He's wearing his light underwear. Oh, is that such a crime? Oh, he shouldn't change his shorts for two more weeks. He catches cold just from reading a bad weather report. Now, don't tell me that's part of my job, too. Oh, now, somebody's got to mother him. He's such a nitwit. You know, I, I had a lot of fun taking care of him, Marge. You will, too. I'm afraid I'll never really be able to take your place. You mean an awful lot to him, Julie. You think so? I'm sure of it. Well, then, wouldn't you think I'd at least hear from him on my wedding day? Would you think he'd just let me run off and marry Jerry without doing something or saying something? Now, Julie, you shouldn't be crying on your wedding day. You should be gay and excited. Oh, I never felt less excited about anything in my whole life. Oh, darling, Jerry will be here to get you in 20 minutes. You'll feel better then. I will not. I'm worried about Edgar. Julie. Julie, where are you? Oh, Edgar. Oh. Did you hurt yourself? Oh, Edgar, I knew you'd come back. I was telling Marge you wouldn't forget about me. Oh, Edgar, what a wonderful oh. surprise. I knew you'd do something like this. I knew it. Where's Charlie? Why, well, I left him in your apartment. Your maid said you were up here. Look, Marge, I told you. Look at that. So you don't act very sick. Well, she's a little upset, but not what you'd call sick. Well, you mean you're not seriously ill, dying or anything? Hmm. Well, then what's the meaning of this? There's nothing the matter with Julie, Edgar. I didn't send you this wire. Oh, is this why you came back from Piners? Oh, we didn't get to Piners. We were forced down about 200 miles from here. We were staying with a family called the McGee. Hmm? Ye gods, Fibber and Molly. Huh? Elry Horton, you know, uh, the Elks Club. Uh. You know, oh, you don't know. No. Oh, you've got to help me, Julie. I've done a terrible oh, mess. What's gotta the matter? Straighten this out. Where are you back? With the door, ma'am. Where are you going? Come on, don't ask questions. Well, wait a minute. What about my wedding? Well, that's your way. This is important. But, Edgar, what do I tell Jerry? Tell him we've gone to Whistle Vista. Huh? Wish for what? <laughs> Stop that. Shut up. 
Is your safety belt fastened, Julie? No, why? Well, I'm afraid I'm lost again. Oh, for Pete's sake. I think I'll have to sit down in the field or something. Yeah, well, sit down in something soft, will you? We made it. Yeah, now I know how a scrambled egg feels. Yeah. Say, that looks a little deserted there. I'm afraid we'll have to spend the night in the barn. Uh, Julie, you aren't angry, are you? What did you say? He said you're not angry, are you? Angry? Why should I be angry? I'm going to spend my wedding night in a nice barn instead of a nasty hotel. And instead of being on my honeymoon, I'm still single, risking my life in a plane with a couple of homicidal morons. Should I be angry about that? Well, now, Julie, now, 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 I can explain that... Oh, bother. What do I care about Fibber McGillicuddy or, or Whip Up Village or whatever you've been babbling about? What am I going to tell Jerry? Oh, he'll understand, I'm sure. You are, eh? Well, I hope he picks Charlie up by the feet and, and beats you unconscious with him. Huh? Hey, shut up or I'll lose my temper! I think she's mad. Get a load of this, Mr. Mayor. What does it say, Dunk? McGee resigns. Clifford McGee's resignation as president of the Chamber of Commerce was accepted by that body at a special meeting this morning. McGee's walkout reportedly came as a protest to the sale of Wistful Vesta Flying Field, which today became the property of Samuel Cudahy, Ironton real estate operator. Negotiation was consummated by Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, who succeeded McGee to the Chamber of Commerce presidency by unanimous election. Ah, poor Fibber. That's tough. I'm afraid McGee's troubles are only starting. The bank is foreclosing on his house today. I sure hate to do this, Fibber, but I hope you'll understand. Oh, sure, I understand, Jim. I don't suppose your bank could see its way clear to give me a third mortgage, could it? Oh, not a chance. The director said if you could afford to give a big luncheon, you could afford to pay the interest on your loan. Should have thought of that sooner, I guess. No hard feelings, are there? Oh, no, no, not the least. Well, give me a ring and you and the missus come over and have dinner. Oh, thanks, Jim. So long. So long, Fever. Oh, uh, this is your hammer. Oh, Edgar, what happened to you? Oh, I'll explain everything. I want you to meet Julie. Julie, this is Fibber McGee, Julie Patterson. How do you do, Miss Patterson? How do you do? Well, uh, come on in. Molly will be glad to see you. May I use your telephone, Mr. McGee? Oh, I certainly. He's got a swell telephone. Uh, don't be long, Toot. Don't worry, I won't. Isn't he nice? I knew you'd like him. Who said I'd like him? Hey, Molly. Yes, dearie, what is it? Molly! Mr. Bergen, you're back. Hello, Molly. Meet my secretary, Julie Patterson. I'm not your secretary. How do you do, Mrs. McGee? How do you do, I'm sure. I'll get your number for you, Miss Patterson. Get me long distance, please. Hello, operator. I want to talk to long distance. Oh, is that you, Mert? How's every little thing, Mert? That's the operator. They're friends. It is, eh? What say, Mert? The stork came to your house this morning. Oh! Wonderful. Boy or girl, dearie? They don't know, but they have it tied up, and if it lays an egg, it's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what say, Mert? Yeah, g give me long distance, will you? Okay, Mert. Here you are, Miss Patterson. Thank you. Hello. Would you get me Mr. Jerry Woods in New York, please? Plaza 50598. Yes, person to person. Oh, Julie Patterson, you're the bride. Would you mind telling that to Mr. Bergen? He doesn't seem to believe it. Out of town? Well, do you know where I could reach him? I see. Thank you. Well, that's just dandy. Now I can't even find the guy I'm supposed to marry. Don't you want to stop and rest, Jerry? Not till I get my hands around Bergen's neck. First, I'll punch his nose. And I'll tell him I'm through. Maybe I'll tell him I'm through first. I'm not even sure any of the towns on this list is the one he mentioned. Such a funny name like We're going to try them all until we find Julie. How are you doing, Julie? I'm all right. I'll be right out, Molly. We were going to put in a built-in shower in there, but there was no place to build it in. 
There, I'm not only clean, but my disposition is better. Molly. Yes, dear? I acted like a heel. I'm sorry. Oh, forget it. Drink your tea. It's all McGee's fault for getting other people into our troubles. Well, I specialize in other people's troubles. Tell me the rest of the story. Is there any way of snatching back this flying field they've sold to Mr. Cudahy? Oh, McGee says the deal is completely consummated. Well, could your husband buy it back, offer Cudahy a juicy profit or something? <laughs> Say, listen, <laughs> if you stood McGee on his head and shook him, all you'd get would be his elk's tooth. And that's got a cavity in it. <laughs> well, there's something funny going on here. I can smell it. Well, that's more than McGee can do. You should see the piece of property Gildersleeve sold him last year. Oh, Julie. Okay. Sounds a little like a banshee. Mm, when Charlie <laughs> uses that tone, he's in trouble. I'll be right back, Molly. Come in, Julie. <laughs> Poor Charlie. Locked up in a bedroom. Why did Bergen put you in solitary? Well, it's a long story and a dirty one. I've been on bread and water for three weeks, I guess. Oh, now, Charlie, you've only well, been here two days. Oh, is that all? Yes. Well, that proves I'm delirious, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. you poor oh, boy. Oh, dear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now tell mm -hmm. Julie all about it. Oh, well, you see, I... Uh, put your hand back, huh? Oh, I can think better this way. Oh, well, it was all about the telegram, see? Charlie, tell me, did you have anything to do with that? Well, I... Mm -hmm. Put your hand back, huh? Oh. Now tell me, did you send that wire? Well, do you want to believe my story or the truth? So you did send the wire? Yeah. Well, Gildersleeve made me do it. I see. It was Gildersleeve's idea. He, he just wrapped me around his finger. Oh, I'm just putty. Oh, pity, putty, putty, pity, putty, pity, putty. <laughs> Gildersleeve uses you to get Bergen out of town, so the Bergen can't take Horton to Wistful Vista. And Cuddy, he gets the flying field, so that whichever town Horton decides to build in. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's what he did. Charlie ought to take you over my knee for messing things up. Oh, but Julie, I... But I haven't got time. That's good. Will you straighten me out with Bergen, too? Yes, but I've got something else to straighten out first. Oh. Molly, where's that property your husband bought from Gildersleeve? Oh, it's out near Wistful Vista Lake. As a matter of fact, the lake leaked onto our land. <laughs> The bank says it isn't worth a quarter. Well, it may be worth more than you think. How far is Ironton? Only a few minutes away. Why? Saddle me a horse, pal. Patterson's going into action. Come right in, Miss Patterson. Thank you. Mr. Cudahy? Miss Patterson, this is indeed a pleasure. Thank you. I won't keep you long. I know you're a very busy man. Oh, <laughs> not at all, not at all. Did I understand my secretary to say that you were from the Horton Airplane Company? Well, I uh, just arrived on one of Mr. Horton's private planes. Oh, I see. I really wasn't expecting Mr. Horton until tomorrow. Well, that's why I came today. You see, I don't want Mr. Horton to know that I dropped in to see you. If he did find it out, it would spoil everything I'm trying to do. And uh, what are you trying to do? Well, I'm um, trying to do my friends and myself some good. Uh, you're talking my language now. Let's hear some more of it. Very well. Horton doesn't want your sight in Ironton. I've already anticipated that possibility, Miss Patterson. It doesn't surprise me. Well, uh, this will. You see, he doesn't want your field in Wistful Vista, either. Doesn't want it. But, but I thought... Yes, I know what you thought. But you're barking up the wrong tree, my friend. You're a sucker for a smokescreen. Smokescreen? Horton has to build his factory in this area, right? Right. So he focuses attention on your site and on the Wistful Vista field so that he can pick up the property he really wants at his own price. And where is this property he really wants? Well, uh, Mr. Horton and I are the only ones who really know. And he won't sell his information. How much? Half. Quarter. Third. So, well, Gurley, what's the dope? The dope is a person named Fibber McGee who has a tract on the north shore of Wistful Vista Lake. 
It's the only sizable spot of water within 50 miles. And planes need a lot of water for testing. Oh. Horton is going to build an amphibian plane factory. Well, what on earth ever gave you that idea, Mr. Cuddy? A very attractive little bird told me. Well, now it's up to you. I'm sure you're smart enough to get this property away from McGee. It'll be as easy as taking candy from a baby. Easier. It'll be as easy as giving candy to a baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, remember now, not a word to a soul about my visit. Oh, absolutely not. I'd hate to think what Horton would say if he got wind of this. Oh, so would I. Goodbye, Mr. Cuddy. Goodbye. Ellen, get Gillisleeve on the phone right away. Charlie, what's wrong? What's the meaning of this uniform here? Charlie, I asked you a question. What's the meaning of this uniform? I, I'm quitting, Durgan. You're what? I'm joining the Foreign Legion. No, no, why? Well, I've, I've taken a lot from you, Durgan, but this bearing me a wistful vista. That's too much. Well, now, wait a minute. What about that telegram you sent? I did it for your own good and mine. Yes, and yours. But it didn't work. <laughs> That's why I'm quitting. Now, Charlie, let's talk this thing over. Do, 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 do. Let's be sensible. Do, do. Let go to Lato. Charlie, listen. No. Charlie. Let go to Lato. All right, all right. Charlie. Yeah? I want to talk to you. Yeah. I'm going to miss you terribly. Oh, come, come. Let's not get maudlin. Why, I do most anything for you, Charlie. Would you leave for Pinehurst right now? No, not until I do what I can for the McGee's. Well, well, there you are. I'm joining the Fern Legion. Charlie. When does the next bus leave for Africa? Oh, wait a minute. No, it's no use, Thurgood. Who'd be dumb enough to sink their dough in a, a hunk of swamp land like this? You did. Oh, I know. Now, well, where can we find another guy like me? Never mind about that. I'm anxious to find out how Julie, the little lamb, comes out with Cudahy, the old goat. Oh, hi, Edgar. Hi, uh, Pepper. Anything wrong? Oh, it's Charlie. He's pining for the pretty girls at Pinehurst. <laughs> he is, eh? Can't we find a little excitement for the kid around here? How about a three-handed game of poker? Those aren't the kind of hands he wants to hold, McGee. Wait. I have just the girl for him. Tell Charlie he's wanted on the telephone. Oh, Charlie. Charlie. Yeah, what is it? You're wanted on the phone. You can take it up in the hall. Thanks. Shut those doors, McGee. Hello. Is this Charlie McCarthy? Yes. Who is it? I bet you can't guess, I bet you. Oh, skip the quiz, kid. What do you want? My autograph or something? No. <laughs> it's you I want. Well, I'm sorry. I... What did you say? <laughs> I want to meet you the worst way, Charlie. Yeah? Well, you sound horribly nice, but what do you look like? Well, everybody says I'm a dead ringer for Ginger Rogers. Now you're talking. See, do, uh, do you, would you like to, uh, I mean, uh, do you pet, pet, huh? Oh, if you mean, do I like going for moonlight rides and holding hands and eating chocolate sodas and holding hands and cutting rugs and holding hands and everything a girl my age shouldn't do. <laughs> yes. Well, how soon can I meet you, huh? Huh? Well, I'll call you up tomorrow and we'll make a definite date. Goodbye, Charlie Ken. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> well, there's nothing like a little complication to clear things up. No. <laughs> oh, Yes, Charlie? Well, I'll be up in a little while. Fibber, Molly, come here. We haven't got something to waste. Look, we're going to have a visitor any minute now, so i got to talk fast. I've just seen Mr. Cudahy, and he can hardly wait to cut his own throat. Now, here's what you have to do. So the main thing is, just keep a deadpan, let everything come as a complete surprise. Is that clear? I haven't had a chance like this in years. They certainly didn't waste any time, did they? Okay, Molly, let him in. Remember, Fibber, you're on your own. Okay. Come on, Edgar. McGee, is my little chum at home? Uh, yes, Mr. Gildersleeve, your little chum is in the living room. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, hi, Gildy. What's cooking? Uh, you don't expect to drop my minding. I mean, uh, you'll forgive my drooping. Uh, dropping. Well, how's everything? 
Oh, fine, Throcky, just fine. Uh, have a cigar? Uh, thanks, I have one. Oh, you got two? Thanks. <laughs> Don't mention it. Uh, let's just call it a pipe of peace. What do you mean? Well, I thought possibly that Chamber of Commerce incident in the airport deal. Oh, I don't let them petty things bother me. I've known you too long for that. You're right, McGee. Yeah. Why, you've known me ever since I was a little squirt. Yes, and look at me now. Now you're a big squirt. <laughs> yeah. Squirting aside, McGee, I know that you're in serious trouble, and I've come here to help you out. Now, it's mighty neighborly of you, Gildy, but there's nothing you could do for me. That's where you're wrong, McGee. I made a deal this afternoon that's going to surprise you. Nothing you could ever do would surprise me, Gildy. Nothing. Is that so? Yes, that's so. What if my client offered to transfer the Wispel Vista flying field to you personally? How would that strike you? Oh, pink. Ah, oh, but shucks, he'd never in the world do that. I haven't any money to buy it with or nothing to trade for it. Except this hunk of swamp you got me to buy. Swamp. Yes, I've been thinking a lot lately about that swamp. And I'm going to make amends for it right now. You are? Mr. Cudahy talked me into... I mean, I, I talked Mr. Cudahy into trading the Wispel Vista flying field for your swampland. Here's the transfer clause. All you have to do is uh, sign it. What does he want this swamp for? Well, I told him it would make a wonderful uh, frog farm. <laughs> 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 well, there aren't many men who do what you're doing, Gilly. Well, a man's got to protect himself. Uh, I mean, uh, our friendship has meant a great deal to me, little chum. Uh, but we mustn't let our feelings get the best of us. Uh, is this the uh, deed to the lake property? Yeah, that's it. I, I was looking at it when you came in and thinking what a big heel you are. Uh, yes. Well, uh, here's the transfer. Sign it and the deed will be all set. You don't know how I appreciate this, Gilly. When I was thinking all those mean things about you, I didn't know you were capable of this. Uh, yes. Well, uh, I've done my good deed for the day. Uh, don't embarrass me with your thanks, little chum. Well... I must be going. Oh, so long, Crocky. I'll never forget what you've done today. Did my ears deceive me or did it work? First time I've ever seen a guy pat you on the back with one hand and pick your pocket with the other. Well, now we're getting somewhere. And this is where you come in, Edgar. Me? Well, how? Call the state capitol and get Horton on the phone. But, Edgar, I promised to be in Ironton tomorrow. Yeah, they're making a big thing out of it. You wouldn't want me to disappoint them, would you? Well, why not land at Whistle Vista? It's a much better field. I can drive you to Ironton later. Okay, Edgar, you're the boss. If that's the way you want it, that's the way it's going to be. All right, I'll see you tomorrow then, Hillary. Okay, yeah, I'll be in Whistle Vista about noon. So long. <laughs> yes, sir. I know everybody within 20 miles or more. Then there wouldn't happen to be a man named Fibber McGee around here. No, down in Yatesville, maybe. That's uh, 27 miles. Thanks very much. Oh, Jerry, I'm ready to cave in. Can't we stop here? Well, certainly, dear. I didn't realize you would... Uh, just sign the book. I got a nice little cabin for you and the missus under that old oak tree. Oh, but I'm not his wife. No? Well, then I can give you two cabins at three dollars apiece. Or one cabin. And the justice apiece, he charges a dollar. <laughs> Which will it be, Marge? I've got a dollar. Give me the book. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> What if Horton decides to go to Ironton instead of Wistful Vista? Well, even so, McGee will still own the airport. And that's a big improvement over that mosquito ranchito we had before. So you see, everything happens for the best. Well, it's a great philosophy if it works. Why, it always works. Take a look at yourself, for instance. If Edgar hadn't dragged you away from New York, why, he might have never found out that you'd married the wrong man. The wrong man? Now, <laughs> don't try to pull the wool over my eyes, dearie. Because I can see through wool like a sheepdog. You're not really in love with that fiancé of yours? Oh, I suppose not, but I never realized it until I came here, Molly. You see? Absence makes the heart grow fainter. It's Bergen you really love, isn't it? Isn't it awful? For the life of me, I can't see what I see in that guy. He's about as romantic as an old, tired clam. Well, what if he isn't so romantic? Who wants to see a Prince Charming coming downstairs every morning on his white horse to breakfast? <laughs> now you take McGee, for instance. You couldn't call him a prince charming. Well, he may not be a prince, but he certainly is charming. You ought to marry Bergen while you have the chance. And the post says the lady waits until she's asked. Tie yourself to a post and you'll never get hitched. <laughs> you know how I got McGee? I sabotaged him. How? <laughs> well, I met him at a Fourth of July picnic. He and I were entered in a three-legged race, and he foolishly let me tie the knot. He never did get loose. 
Don't let your man get away. Grab him. Like that? No, like that. Come in. Oh, hello, Edgar. Hello, Molly. You want to see me? Yes. No, no. I was looking for Molly. Flies. Oh. <laughs> Will you do something for me, Molly? Why, certainly, Edgar. What is it? Will you call Charlie again? He thinks he's been jilted. Well, I'll unjilt him right away. Tell the melancholy Mickey's wanted on the telephone. Charlie? Yes? Pick up the phone. It's for you. Penny? Hi, Mac. Mac. Oh, you mean me, huh? <laughs> Do you still want to see me, Charlie, darling? Mm, do you? Mm? Well, I'm, I'm a little tied up now, but I'd like to cut loose with you. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, can you get away from Mr. Bergen? Listen, sweet. He works for me. He does what? He works. I meant bread and butter. I'm hungry. Well, how about me, me at Kramer's Drug Store? Oh, that'd be swell. I'll buy you a double chocolate strawberry soda. <laughs> how about a big box of candy, hmm? Yeah. yeah, that's what I said, a chocolate soda. How soon can you meet me there? Just as soon as I fix my face. Yeah, well, bring plenty of lipstick, because we're gonna paint the town red. <laughs> oh, boy. Bye. You. <laughs> Molly, you're terrific. <laughs> if there's a pretty girl involved, you can count on Charlie. For a kid his age, he certainly has a lot of wolf in him. Fell on my big Rusty. Don't you think you've had enough, Mr. McCarthy? Six sodas, that's an awful lot. Yeah, I just can't leave this stuff alone. And at my age, too. You have to control yourself. You know, I'm gonna start tapering off. Just two scoops in the next one. We usually limit two to a customer of our fudge zombies, and you're way over the limit, but... Oh, well, considering how you're being stood up and all. Yeah, but I ain't quitting. How uh, McCarthy don't take things stood up sitting down. See, maybe it's taken her a long time to dress, huh? I don't... Uh, yeah, maybe she is, yeah. Maybe she's coming in one of those uh, gownless evening straps, huh? You know what she called me? She called me Charlikin. <laughs> Charlikin. Sickening, ain't it? But I love it. <laughs> this one's on the house. Oh, thank you, Rusty. You know, this suspense is killing me. Each second she's late, I, I die a little. Yeah, ain't women awful? I know what you mean. You mean you've suffered too? Yeah, I... Oh, the things I've been through. Oh, no. well, what fools we morons be. Yeah, yeah. Gee, you're really smitten, aren't you, Charlie? Yeah, well, the trouble with me is when I get smitten, I stay smut. Yeah, that's the spirit. Yeah, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be a hermit. I'm going to forget all about women. Yeah, forget about women. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to forget all about sodas, too. Yeah, forget about sodas. I'm gonna forget all about women, too. Yeah, forget about I, women. Yeah. You can cross out that last one. Oh. Hello, Rusty. Oh, hi, girls. Where's your little friend? Just a guy that hates women. Yeah. Why, you chisel you? A guy can change his mind, can't he? Coffee black, please. Make it two. Okay. No man in this town named McGee? Double McGee. Hello, Jerry and Marge. Charlie! Where's Bergen? Well, he's out at the airport showing off. Is Julie with him? Yeah, you better hurry up if you don't want to lose her. Come on, Marge. Hey, Jerry, you don't have a buck, do you? You know, purely business transaction. Okay, here's a quarter. But remember, it's on the Lend-Lease plan. Is that the lease you can lend? <laughs> mm, money, 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 money. <laughs> uh, girls, will you come over and have a soda? <laughs> Oh, McGee, I don't think we should go. Oh, now, don't get so excited, Molly. Why don't you be calm like I am? Hey, where's my hat? It's on your head. Oh, I just talked to the Capitol Airport, Deborah, and Horton's plane left on time, so we can go up now and escort him in. Oh, oh. Edgar, do you think I ought to go? After all, I don't even know the man. Oh, Molly, now stop worrying. This is safer than an automobile. 
Bill, I'm going to let Horton's plane in first, so keep the people off the field, won't you? All right, sir. Edgar, there's Jerry. Oh, there they are. Julie! Well, Jerry! And Marge, too. Come on. Will you heat up my engine, Bill? Okay, sir. Jerry, I tried to reach now, you, it's but... all my fault. I don't blame you. Look, I'd like to get a word in here. Well, Edgar can explain the whole thing. You see, he came I'd like back to explain... and... McGee, keep away from those gadgets. You know what happened to the dishwasher. Ah, oh, don't worry, Molly. I'm mechanical-minded. You know that. How do you fasten this belt, mastermind? Huh? Oh, boy, you just put it away. Boy, you got it all set. <laughs> That's tight. That's tight. Oh! Trevor McGee. Pull the emergency. No. Will that crate of yours fly? Sure, but watch it. Come on, Edgar. Get in the front cockpit, folks. What's he going to do with Bill's plane? I don't know, but we'll soon find out. That should be wistful, Vista. There's one of our B-4s. Hey, what's he trying to do? He's headed straight for us. Look out! Boy, that was a close one. Bergen ought to know better. Where is he? He's doing a barrel roll around us. making me dizzy. There he's out there, see? Oh, why doesn't that plane get out of the way? Oh, they're going to collide! Oh, I'll remember this the rest of my life. This is the rest of your life. Now where is he? Well, I wish he was where I wish he was. I can't find him. Look, I've had enough of this. Pull out the head for Ironton. Now that we're up here, what do you want to do? Maybe if we get close enough, you can tell Fibber how to land the plane. Well, it's not as easy as that. The plane will have to do it the hard way. Bill, will you get under their wing? Jump out. We haven't got any parasites. Oh. <laughs> Don't you get them, Molly? I says we. Hey, funny, McGee. Oh, well, I'm all up in the air. Edgar, come back! Goodness, we're back on terra firma. That's where I'm going to stay, Link. Throw it in my face. McGee, do you mind if I faint? I think that's a swell idea. Oh. McGee! Oh. 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 Did that come out of thee? I'm afraid it did, Charlie. Yeah. yeah. I've warned you before about too many sodas. Oh, please don't shout at me. It isn't the first time a woman drove a man to drink. 
Is Mr. Bergen here? Yes, come in. Oh, hello, Julie. Hello. Julie, there's something I've got to... I mean, that is, there's something we've got to... Julie, we're married. Is that on the level? Well, congratulations. Oh, there you are, you little swindler, you. Why, what's the matter with you, Gildy? Oh, what a pretty picture. <laughs> yes, it was Cudahy and his gang. You took them in and they threw me out. And by George... Boys! Order. Oh, pardon me, Throcky. Yes, uh, certainly, Chum. I'll be back in a minute. Yeah. Is that the Bergen here? Yes, who? Hillary! Uh, Bud, just a minute, Bud. Oh, wow. Hello. Hello. I got here as fast as I could. I, I tried to land a whistle of Vista, but so Did you see Mr. Cuddy? Did you sign anything? No, no, you see, Edgar took... Yahoo! Never were in business yeah, again. What's this all about? I don't understand. Well, we tried to get you to build your new factory here, but everything went haywire. Well, why didn't you simply tell him to put the factory where you want it? <laughs> why should he do what I say? Well, why not? You own the controlling stock in the company? What? Do I? I told you I bought that stock for you a month ago. You mean to tell me that you don't know what you own? Well, Julie always... Uh, but, Julie, you won't have to leave me now. Ever. Why, Edgar, this is so sudden. Oh, congratulations, oh. Mr. Bergen. It's just so nice of you to ask oh, her. congratulations. Somehow things don't look as black as they did, except that eye. Come on, let me put a hunk of hamburger on it for you, Throcky. Thanks, little chum. Congratulations, everybody. If my girl will only keep the date, we can make this a real celebration. I bet you she's sorry she stood you up now, I bet you. Well, you see, I... Because I sure think you're super, Charlie. Well, mow me down. <laughs> <laughs> Just for that, you can all go home.